She puts her hand here, she slides it up, it creates a little bit of torque around the joint, okay? And she holds it for a second and then comes back down and repeats the process. Good. And then slide. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Warren Kelstein here at Kelstein Chiropractic in Towson, Maryland. I'm a chiropractor and today I'm with Sarah. Sarah, hey Sarah. Hey. You just got off your night shift. You're a nurse here at Hopkins. Yeah. Yes, you're a Hopkins nurse. Um, Tell me a little bit about your, we're gonna talk shoulders and we're gonna show you here in just a second something that I do with Sarah's shoulder that it oftentimes with joint complaints around the shoulder or even rotator cuff impingement, um, uh, tendonitis, things of that nature, if you will, um, adhesive capsulitis, a lot of different shoulder conditions respond well to this therapy that I do. And there's a thing that you can do at home if you're suffering from shoulder pain that might be helpful. Um, and always consult with a doctor first. So Sarah, coming back to you, um, relative to your shoulder, your history, you're a nurse. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey kind of to this point. Yeah. So back in 2020, I actually injured my shoulder, moving a very heavy couch through a very small door frame. And my shoulder basically kind of felt like it popped out and then popped back in. And after that, it just was super painful, lots of inflammation, um, and I was having weakness with it. Like it was hard for me to lift things, both overhead and like do any kind of like sliding movements at work. Um, I've done, I feel like, gone through the ringer with trying all different things. What does that mean? So I've done three different steroid injections in my shoulder. Into the shoulder, three steroid injections. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and how did they help? So the first one I got pretty shortly after the injury within probably a week, and that one helped beautifully. That was like all the back in 2020. Very and diagnostic for the shoulder mm -hmm. itself. Like, yeah. okay, you got, you got some relief in that area. Yeah, and then I would say about a year and a half later, I was having some flare ups, and so I got a second one. Okay. And that one lasted maybe about a month. Okay. And then about back in March-ish, I got a third one because I was again having another flare up and that one maybe worked for about two weeks. So okay. didn't get a ton of relief from it, which I was a little disappointed, but um, I've been having just issues on and off with it. And then it wasn't until about nine, 10 months ago that my shoulder just like completely locked up. And that's not something I've ever really had before. I couldn't move my arm like across my chest. Mm -hmm. It just, you, someone could yank it and it wasn't gonna move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why we've been kind of trying to figure out how we can get it better and we have we have done it <laughs> yeah so let's back up a little bit and i i love that she's got better range of motion now she's starting to work out without pain mm -hmm. uh she's starting to be at her at her job where she's not like okay i actually got to go over to this side of the yeah. bed because i have to lift it because if i reach across this person we're all going down yeah right? i mean <clears throat> even trying to like hold a patient's like spine in place when we're putting on like a cervical collar it if the bed is not where I can rest my forearms, I can't hold them up. And that's just a safety risk overall and limits my ability to do my job. <laughs> hold on while I get your neck collar on. No, truly. And it's a, it's a significant change in, the, in a couple weeks. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and speaking to that, right, uh, in just a second, but backing up a little bit. like So steroids are a really common um, uh, chemical that are used and treating pain um, and inflammation in the body, w w in a lot of areas of the body, whether it's a shoulder or whether you have plantar fasciitis, um, it's quite often used. Uh, you'll The more you know about it, the more you can, one, respect it as a tool to be used, as well as to understand and educate yourself on um, how often to use it, when to use it, how good it is, how bad it is. Um, and so working with your provider, if you're exploring those type of options is really important, but educate yourself in the grand scheme of things. And so um, I, I don't know if you heard me when I said that it was very diagnostic for your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Like it really was. Yeah. If she had a cervical radicular complaint, like if she really had true cervical problems that were causing pain into her shoulder and limiting her strength in her shoulder and she got a steroid in her shoulder it wouldn't help <clears throat> at all so it's very diagnostic it tells us kind of generally speaking where the problem is dry needling can be like that as well for us um, uh, uh, shockwave can be like that for us as well right <laughs> um, when we're doing you know we're working in an area so uh, and all things considered 
when we came back and I, I jumped in on care with her and I haven't seen you in a while mm -hmm. and I, and I really hadn't examined you uh, yeah. up to this point. So she'd been kind of bouncing around like multiple orthopedic uh, consults, imaging, MRI, uh, diagnostic ultrasound of the shoulder. Okay. The labrum is good. The joint looks okay. Relatively speaking in terms of arthritic changes, no gross tears of the tendons. And then we said, all right, let's just do a functional examination of the shoulder. Let's really dive deep. Okay, and I'm gonna speed up to the answer. I looked at her neck, I looked at her shoulder, I looked at her forearm, I looked at the way that she uh, stabilized her scapula, and I really challenged the joint from a directional preference standpoint. So, Mackenzie for the win. And so we'll show you yeah. how we did that, um, and really grateful for that technique that we uh, used in the office for every problem that we see relative to joint problems. So stand on up for me. Mackenzie method, you kind of hear about that from time to time. If you're in chiropractic school, um, Sarah, we're gonna, you're gonna stand over there. I wanna bring this down like a bench, and you'll be sitting facing that way. You know that, uh, that rotator cuff move where you go like this, you hold the cup, and then you slide it behind, and then I give you a little lift. Mm -hmm. and I'm doing soft tissue work over here. Yep. Uh, that is what we're gonna do. Alrighty. So if I didn't know about Mackenzie, and if I didn't know about <laughs> ART, um, active release technique, I wouldn't be able to combine those two together and do this kind of uh, therapeutic work on her shoulder, neck, as well as the, uh, the joint itself. So this is McKenzie method. It's end range extension on the joint. Her hand's gonna come out like this. At home, if you're dealing with some front shoulder pain, tension around the shoulder, inability to abduct or abduct your arm above your head, feeling limited, feeling stuck, Okay, as you go overhead, if it's coming from the joint, this can be helpful for you. Okay, put your hand behind your back for me, nice and easy. Good. All right, so the first, the first movement technically is extension of the shoulder for a McKenzie method. So if you're at home and all you can do is this, and you can't get your hand back here, then you just take your hand and you go here. You pull back as far as you can, and then you do a little overpressure. You extend that joint as much as you can go. So for some people it might look like this when they're really limited in their motion of the joint. And then once you've kind of cleared your back, you slide it behind like Sarah has right now. And then she slides it up. <laughs> amazing work, amazing work. Uh, slides it up as far as she can comfortably go. So she starts to get to a point where she feels a little pull through the front of the joint. Notice her posture. She's sitting up really tall. Um, she's not like this, cause go like that for me. So it really limits her ability to move here because her scapula goes like this. <laughs> and when the scapula goes like this, the joint can't move as well. Okay, uh, long story short. <laughs> so um, sits up. she sits up tall, Sarah does, right? She puts her hand here, she slides it up. It creates a little bit of torque around the joint, okay? And she holds it for a second and then comes back down and repeats the process, good. And then slide, and at first, uh, and a lot of people, this feels a little uncomfortable. Nah, this doesn't help, I'm gonna stop. No, we can't do that, right? We gotta work it a little bit, a little discomfort. Okay, we can work with that. Just don't like crank on your shoulder. No, 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 work it a little bit. And this is the same as, and, and true with a lot of times with the low back complaints that I see that are facet or discogenic in nature, all right? Um, it's like, I gotta work it a little bit before it gets better. So, no pain, no gain. Let's go That's ahead true. and move you a little bit. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Try to find that balance though, right? Of work mm -hmm. and not hurting yourself. And so she's going through and I'm working over just kind of uh, the posterior capsule of the shoulder into the supraspinatus, into the neck area where she just kind of naturally because she's protecting her shoulder and it hurts and she just hasn't been moving and ideally she's got a little trigger point there and some uh, restriction in the tissue. So I'm loosening up her neck and shoulder while she's doing a McKenzie. It's like a twofer, if you will. And if you know any radial nerve flossing, it's also a little bit of that, but that's another story. So swinging back and here, good. Slide up, good, relax. I'm gonna pull now. I'm gonna give her a little end range resistance. Now go ahead. And so we can't show, actually show them what, uh, with your arm, what you could do before. Like when it was like, locked? Yeah, when it was locked. You're like, stop. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, hold on, let me just help you. No, nothing's <laughs> happening, right? And so, uh, from McKenzie's standpoint, we went through this quite a bit, and then I worked it with my hands, and then I did some overpressures, and I was in the room with her for a while. I'm like, look, we are not leaving this room until we have either an answer or a referral, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and we got an answer. Yeah. And then swing your hand behind. Good. 
could take your head down for me. And so at the end of the day, like to, and this speaks to the people that are in school as well that are, uh, that are watching PT, Cairo, like we, we use a lot of really good technology relative to passive modalities on Sarah's shoulder prior to us doing that examination. So she was working with the doc before this and they did, they did a lot of cool things that I like to show in here, like shockwave and laser and dry needling. And it wasn't really getting the results, right? Nope. So it was, it was a failed trial of care, yes. trial of care. And then we reorganized, we reset, and we readdressed it with a different protocol. And fortunately we have this protocol on hand and it made a substantial difference in day one. And it's held for three weeks, two yeah, weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks, and she's lifting weights and she's working out now and she's not, I hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully this shoulder's gotten out of your mind a little bit. Yes. Because that sucks to have pain for years like mm -hmm. this and then and really a lot over the last six months and for it to limit you at work. I get it. <clears throat> it's brutal. Yeah, I, I was just desperate for anything to like fix it or at least get an answer on what the issue is because I felt like I just kept hitting all these walls and people would be like, oh, well, it's not a surgical case. It, do physical therapy and then... I would go to a physical therapist and that wouldn't get me anywhere. And it was just like constantly hitting all these walls of, tri like you said, like trial and error. But we finally found the one thing that my shoulder has been responding to. And then now that we've got the shoulder more comfortable being in what we'll call a centrated position, less noxious stimulus, her body's not guarding around uh, a deduction of the shoulder itself. Uh, what do we do now? We'll just get it healthier. Just work it, load it. Then we keep focusing on things that support her body as a whole relative to just holistic health. Um, so that's the goal, right? The steroid is good. It's good for diagnosis. It's good for pain relief. She's suffering, like I get it. Mm -hmm. And I really respect the person that's doing that. But don't avoid the whole picture. Keep leaning into trying to find a long-term solution. Um, if you're someone that kind of has good results with that. And like, hell yeah, the steroid gave her like months of relief in the first one years. Yeah. And I hear that. So um, take the available window that you have there and start getting some either care or work self, self care on that area because it ain't gone. The problem that is. <laughs> All right, and then so we've been kind of living on easy street right now. Uh, the good thing that I have in my tool bag is I can adjust her thoracic spine. When I adjust her thoracic spine, it's going to allow for her um, her ability to be balanced and to get into better extension through this area um, so that she can even sit up even a little taller with control. And then it'll put her scapula in an even better position. She'll get better movement around the shoulder. I'll adjust her AC joint if necessary um, and CT junction. So this area between the neck and the shoulders. When I have joint dysfunction or tension or functionally the segment isn't moving like I want to and we do this a lot it happens quite often in this general area um, so people get relief but also it'll help with my therapeutic results with the McKenzie's on the shoulder and so what you're seeing right now is like a really in Sarah's case it's a win um, where I'm gonna I'm gonna move her here I'm gonna load this joint over and over again until it has a better resting position as well. The stimulus to the brain is not sending pain, pain, pain. Um, the tissues around it are going to respond accordingly. That's why she had that magic happen with the McKenzie's. That's what's mm -hmm. going on. And then we're going to go out there now that her neck, mid back, her shoulders feeling good. What's going on? Who's going to fight? No, no, no. We're not gonna, <laughs> let's go lift some weights. Okay. In a controlled, safe environment. Okay. <laughs> So we're gonna show you how we do all those things. Uh, let me do those adjustments real quick. Mm -hmm. um, hand like this for me. Nice and easy, I'm gonna load. I want you just to whip your elbow back when you're ready. Go ahead, good. And then you're gonna go ahead and stand up. That is an AC joint and a glenohumeral joint adjustment. And then rest here. Good. Really easy and gentle. Here, you're gonna feel some movement right there. Good. Get your pigtails here, ponies. Good. Good. Really gentle, you'll feel movement like that, okay? Good. And a little bit more release coming across. Good. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you back up.
tail. <laughs> yeah, get your tail. <laughs> you go ahead and stand up for it. And then I'm gonna do a couple more passes on that. We could do some cool action, like quicker versions of this, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be moving her hand even higher up with a little bit more added pressure from my top hand to create more of a release. And then we're gonna go work out. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you gotta say to the people? Make sure you take care of yourself and yes. get to the bottom of your problems. There we go. I Don't like let that. them go on. Yeah, you know. <laughs> no, but definitely. I think my biggest thing was I just kind of at a point accepted that it was just going to be my new normal that I couldn't move my shoulder. And I said, what? <laughs> you said, no, absolutely not. <laughs> and it's, I mean. And you did too. <laughs> yeah. You, you being here did that. Like, yeah. I, I, well, it took a little bit. At first, I just kind of accepted it. And then. When I came here and we kind of started trialing more things and new things, I started getting more hope that there was more stuff out there that I just wasn't aware of. Because I tried, like I said, the physical therapy, I've gotten the scans, I've seen orthopedic doctors and they were all told me it's not surgical. And so I was like, well then what is it? Like, you know, <laughs> I didn't know what else was out there. Um, and so I came here and then that's what kind of struck me to be like, okay, we're gonna figure this out. And and we did. And every day I wake up and I, first thing I do is see if my shoulder still moves across my body and every morning it does. And I'm like, all right, it's gonna be a great day. Heck yeah. <laughs> you have imaging findings and they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, at this point you failed conservative care. We're gonna look and mm -hmm. do a scope on your shoulder, but you didn't need that. And the surgeons made the right call in yeah. that sense. But you were still at a point where you're like, well, no one's helping me and then no one has answers. So what do I do? Yeah, I just didn't know what direction to go in. You know, yeah, I knew all the people that I didn't need to be seeing, but I didn't know who I did need to be seeing. For real. All right. Now, all you go ahead and give me two more like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Slide up. Good. Take your head down now for me. Good job. Now back out. All right. And again. Good. Slippity slide. Good. Head down. Relax your shoulder. Let it drop. Good. Perfect. Breathe in. And let go. Loose, loose, loose. There you go. Sarah, it is a pleasure to work with you. Appreciate you. Always a pleasure being here. <laughs> yeah, right Thanks for watching. You can check out some of our exercises if, uh, if Carly can do that. And then if you have any questions about McKenzie method or anything we talked about, put the comment below, like, subscribe, do all those cool things. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Love it. So Katie, what do we got going on this week? What did I do with my pen? Right, like, how do you work a full, like 12, almost 13 hours a night, get off work and go to the chiropractor? I'm like, because nothing feels better than getting my back adjusted after a long ass shift. Mm hmm. Good. And inhale, come back in. Perfect. So good. And like they look so simple. Yeah. 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 Until it's not. <laughs> right in that area that she should be feeling it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what Katie was doing for RDLs here. Six soon. <laughs> good. You're gonna take your toes in and your hips are gonna be nice in line with your body. You're just gonna boop. Oh. Oh. Just basically letting your your chest drop. You're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together and then you're gonna push them away. What I do is just constantly tell me to kind of push up because I didn't put my elbows on the way down. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Five more. You're doing great. Two more. 
And one more. Nice, good. Then you're going to rotate, push out, and back down, straight arms. And then we'll repeat. That me plus anything, weight, anything with my arm straight out, my arm does not do well. Let's, let's try that if it bothers you then, then we just go, we row up, and then you're gonna pull them up, rotate up, push out, and then come back down with straight arms. You got it. Give me oh. 10 of those. <laughs> Keep your weight on your heels. There you go. Um, okay. Well, as you exploded, you kind of did that calf raise yeah. on that second to last one. So yeah. Okay. I could just tell you have an explosion as you like to go to your toes. So that's why I was just saying to keep that weight on the heels. I want that bottom knee to be right under that hip. You want that front ankle to be right below that knee, front knee. You want your shoulder blades in that back pocket. You're gonna pull down, and then come back up. Good. And just make sure the shoulders stay down and back. Beautiful. There you go. I thought the same thing. My that is my text tone. <laughs> but I have my phone all vibrate. <laughs> Perfect. Good job, Sarah. Got it. You're welcome. With a renegade row, you're gonna have your hands under your shoulders in the up push-up position. Just your feet about hip width apart for just to give you some stability. And what you're gonna do, engage that core, you're gonna exhale, up, and alternate. We're just gonna do five on each side. All right. Hey, there you go. So you're gonna take a step back and you're gonna first have the kettlebell in like the front rack position. Step back, when you go down, press up. And you wanna make sure that you have your knee 90 degrees, press up. Oh. <laughs> and then we're gonna switch to just 10 on each side. Okay. 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 Wait, this one's going back? Yep, and then you'll be pushing up. As you step back, you push up. Can I like rotate like that? Yep, yeah, that's Can fine. I drop my all the way like that? Nope. Okay. Try again. All right. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, he knows I wouldn't, I wouldn't take him to that. There you go. Yeah. He doesn't even bother asking. But that doesn't mean that if, he, if it was offered to him, he wouldn't have it. No, he would. Very good. Yeah, he yeah. is. Good recovery. Good. Keep that core nice and tight. Very good. Put it by your eyebrow. So it's kind of like we're here. It's like we're about to tip a hat, but we take the hat, we throw it away. Take the hat, throw it away. So you could do like two sets of 10 of these, and you're gonna feel it. I know, because even doing this, I can feel the nerves. And then you have the medial, I think, this one. And you go with it. So it's like you have, you're, you have a serving tray, and you're gonna Creepy too. Yeah. 
It looks like a like, like, you're like a broken like doll. In the and then there's movie, like this one. Okay. So you could do like two sets of ten. Ooh, that felt good. It's literally like stretching out the nerves. In each side, right? I can't see why not. Yeah. I mean, it's usually, I, I think it's more supposed to be on the affected side, but like if yeah, it's well, both. Yeah, we're having like kind of nerves on both sides, so. Then let's do both sides. So, okay. we're gonna take that hat and then we're gonna throw it away. Throw it away, good. Yeah, and I feel a little tingling in those fingers. Uh huh. I kind of like it though. <laughs> got the whole face through it. <laughs> all right, all right, then the next one yep. was... Like a waiter, and your head's gonna go with it. So you're gonna go, giving them food. Like, hey, how you doing? You know, tossing the head. Right. I don't like this one either, but I probably think that's just because of the way my shoulders be. <laughs> <laughs> shoulders be like that sometimes. And that's it.